Today we're gonna to be talking about direct injection versus port injection. What is direct injection? You may not know what direct injection is. I'm gonna go ahead and bring you a little up to speed of what direct injection is as opposed to port injection. We have different forms of injection. Let's talk about fuel today. There's different ways we can get fuel into the engine. The most common way that we know about is through a carburetor. A carburetor is a perfect way to get fuel into an engine. It's a really a good way to atomize. So here we have a carburetor. Fuel goes in, there's a venturi inside. Fuel right in the venturi as the fuel comes out, the air is moving so fast it mixes with the fuel and right at the venturi it actually mixes very well right there. And we have a good mixture of air and fuel. It's just as good as an injector. Um, they invented a fuel injector, this part right here, to atomize fuel. Um, we'll talk about fuel injection versus carburetors. Uh, right now we're talking about the carburetor. And the carburetor is a very good way to mix air and fuel together. The problem with mixing air and fuel uh, together is that within a few milliseconds, it will revert back to its original state. So let's back up a little bit. What does that mean? The carburetor does do a good job to mix air and fuel together, but within a few milliseconds of being atomized very well, it'll start to go back to its natural state. So they'll start to separate. So air, fuel come together to the venturi, mixes very well. And before it even gets into the intake manifold, the plenum, it's already starting to, to separate back to its natural state. So we start having a fuel molecules and air molecules not staying stuck together. So that's the problem. If there was a way to attach an oxygen molecule to every hydrocarbon, to every fuel molecule, we would have full combustion. That's what the problem is that we're having. If there was a way to stretch out the hydrocarbon line straight and oxygen could attach itself all the way to every hydrocarbon, we would get full combustion. Okay, so we know that we do need to atomize the fuel very well to get full combustion. The problem is that it instantly starts to revert back to its natural state. So we need to deal with that. The way that uh, Smokey had an idea of dealing with that was this way right here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The way the manufacturers chose is to not um, necessarily, um, I don't want to say they didn't agree with Smokey, they just chose a different way to do it. So. We have the next version of what we started to see in the automotive world, and that was a throttle body injection. So I'm missing the throttle body here in the injection. I'll put a picture up to the Holly Sniper that we have on the run stand right now, just to show you different versions of a throttle body injection. Throttle body injection means we're removing the carburetor. You can still see it's a conventional manifold, and we're putting a throttle body up here injector. So this is where the injectors would go above right above the the bores and now we pulsate these injectors at a high fuel pressure on a carburetor we have four five six seven pounds of fuel pressure no more than seven ever on on a carburetor and then it does the rest by vacuum on an injected motor what we do is by increasing the fuel pressure to 43 50 pounds sometimes more at this spot and then stopping it and then we have an injector with the little needle inside of it that gets lifted up off its base with a bunch of little holes at the bottom that high pressure needle lifts up we have a fine mist at a high pressure squirting out of these two injectors real good way to atomize fuel high pressure crack that needle open it's going to spray a fine mist and we have a good air fuel mixture right there but what do we learn by the time it gets here to the inside, we're already starting to revert back to its natural state. So no matter how well you atomize it, it doesn't matter. Within a few milliseconds, it turns back into its natural state. So we got fuel molecules and oxygen molecules. Okay, so what if we could do um, many different things? What uh, Smokey decided to do was to address the issue of reverting back to its natural state. What GM, Ford, Chrysler, and the manufacturer started to do was not embrace Smokey's idea and learn from his idea that it does revert back to its natural state and started starting to, um, how can we now learn from what he said but not have to pay him anything to do it? I don't know if we'll cut that out or we won't cut that out. So, if you just go to some of the basics that 
it starts to revert back to its natural state very quickly. Well, you could keep lowering this, lowering this, lowering this. Um, and then we have our next version of fuel injection. We have a throttle body, but we're not injecting fuel here at the throttle body. The Holley Sniper, the Fitec, all the different uh, throttle body ones do inject right here, which is awesome. It atomizes fuel really good. But once again, it starts to re revert back to its natural state. So here, the manufacturers, GM Ford, Chrysler, the powers that be decided, well, okay, Smokey says that it reverts back to its natural state within a few milliseconds. Let's put the injector at the port. So here we have the injector at the port and individual injectors as opposed to the injectors up at the throttle body. So now we're not injecting it up here. We got it real close to the valve because what did we learn? Fuel reverts back to its natural state within a few milliseconds. So let's get the injector as close as we can to the valve. And here we see a modern, efficient way to do it at injecting it at the port. Now we come to what is direct injection. What if we could inject fuel right on top of the intake valve? We're not gonna inject it up here. We're not even gonna inject it here. We're gonna go in there and inject it right on top of the intake valve. That's called direct injection. And now you know what direct injection uh, is. Um, it's taking the injector and putting it right as close as we can to the intake valve. So as soon as it opens, we're injecting fuel almost in the cylinder. Because what did we learn? fuel reverts back to its natural state fairly quickly. So if we inject it right at the valve, we've now taken um, the problem away of, of, of not getting good fuel atomization, and we can have the fuel and oxygen molecules stay together while it goes through the combustion process. Great idea. In an idea, it's great. And I'm gonna explain to you why you don't really want direct injection. Um, over here, probably on this side, let's choose this side. I'm gonna show you some pictures of a cylinder head that came in this week. Um, and we have what direct injection does to an engine. It's great. In theory, it's great. The problem with injecting fuel at the valve is that we don't have any way to clean the intake port. And while you might not think the intake port is just pumping air, that's what the manufacturer thought, it's just pumping air, why do we need to clean it? What we don't realize is that the intake pulse goes all the way in, it, it'll actually go out the pipe and come back in all the way to the intake manifold every time the valves open. So every time we have combustion, the valves are opening and, and exhaust is going out the exhaust port, you think it's there, it's gone, it ain't coming back. No, it'll go down the pipe this far and come all the way back up into the intake manifold. You have to slow it down at real high speed. Um, maybe one day we'll do that on the dyno and we'll do a plexiglass manifold and you'll see how fuel actually moves on the way down. But every time comes right back. The next time it doesn't come back as far, it keeps moving down and more fuel comes in. So what do we have? We have uh, combustion gases now coming back up into the intake manifold and we have no way of cleaning them. Why? We're just pumping air. So the fuel is being, is being injected right at the valve and it, in theory was good. In reality, it's not good. What we end up having is, with what we're starting to see here in the industry is the intake ports completely, completely blocked off. And I'll show you, probably up here, like I said, I will show you what the intake ports look like. So now we have late model modern cars that don't really have a lot of miles on them and they're ha the cylinder heads are having to be taken off as general maintenance or taken up, take the intake manifold off and they do what's a walnut shell blasting. They're actually blast the intake ports, pull the manifold off to clean the intake ports on the vehicle. Um, kind of crazy that the maintenance now and the money that it costs to try to save a little more fuel and we're spending so much more money in maintenance because it's not really um, the, way, the way to do it. So we do have a lot of vehicles. We personally own a uh, Honda Acura and we, and we love it and it's, it's direct injected, but we're gonna have to end up getting into it and cleaning out the intake ports. In theory, it's good. In longevity, it is not good. So we will see that probably direct connection has seen its day unless they figure out a way to clean the intake ports in, a, in, a, in another way, unless we figure out a way to clean the intake ports. 
Um, I have dabbled with the idea of water injection into the intake port to help clean out those intake ports. I'll let you know how that works. Maybe I'll develop and patent a water injection system for, for direct injection engines. Who knows? Maybe you'll see this and you'll do it. I don't know. Um, anyway. All right, so now we talked about fuel injection versus direct injection and why there is direct injection, right? So we, we want to know why there is direct injection. It's because we're trying to get the, the, the fuel injector as close to the valve as, can, as we can because of fuel atomization and the way the fuel reverts back. Once again, because of smoky unit in my mind. Okay, so, all right, let's go out to the shop and I'll show you what direct injection looks like in a cylinder head. Um, and I'm kind of going to just show you, I'm not going to decide for you if you want it or you don't want it. You can make that decision yourself. Once I show you what direct injection is, and what it does and what it does to your intake ports, I think it's gonna be pretty easy to make a decision on your own. All right, let's go out there and take a look. No. Hello YouTube, thought you might like to see this. This is a Chevy Traverse. It was coming in the shop now with all these direct injection. And what's happening is, this is what's happening. I don't know if you can see that. Excuse me, I'm hot back here in the shop and I just thought you'd like to see this. So, all of the valves are carboned up all of the ports are carboned up. There's nothing wrong with the exhaust ports in this head. It pulls perfect vacuum. None of the intake ports were pulling vacuum at all. So there's no compression on his. It's completely, just completely full of crud. So direct injection, you like it? You think you like it? I don't know, think twice. All right, as for me, I'm getting back to work. I just thought you'd like to see this little quick video on direct injection. Now, well, before I let you go, do you know what direct injection is all about? Let me flip the camera around and see if we can show you what it's all about. All right, so now we're back from the shop and I've shown you what the intake port and intake valve looks like and I've shown you what we're gonna have to go through now to clean all that crud out there. The valves and the seats are all still good. There wasn't any need to pull this head off the vehicle except to clean the ports, yeah? The cost of running an engine now is keep getting higher and higher. We, we're not making engines that can go longer without maintenance. We're making them now that we need more maintenance. So we try to get a few more miles per gallon and it's almost like the manufacturers are saying, you want more miles per gallon? Well, here you go. You want an electric car? I'm gonna give you a Prius. You want, you know, it's like, I'm gonna give you what you want, but I'm gonna give it to you so where it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, you'll never want that again. So here it is on, on direct port injection. Oh, you want more efficient? You want to get down any more efficient? And guess what? It does get better gas mileage. But you're going to be taking that to the dealer and having them tear your engine apart just to clean the crud out of the ports. It makes no sense. In my mind, it's just a way to give you what you want so that you don't want it anymore. Um, I don't know if, if direct injection has a, a, a long time here on Earth. Um, I think it will if we can figure out a way to clean the intake port. If we can keep the intake port clean while running, maybe water injection. I'm coming up with a, with a water injection prototype for our car and I'll see if it works. Um, and there may be a way to still get direct injection and not have to pull your engine apart to clean the ports. Okay. So, I hope that's been enlightening. I hope you got something from this. If you have, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe it's the like and subscribe, the like and subscribe button. And let, let all your buds know about this. Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad. Um, as for me, I'm getting back to work. Let everybody know, tell your buds, tell your friends, tell your dogs. All right, tell your neighbors. Tell everybody. I don't know, who are you gonna tell? Who are you gonna tell? All right, I hope this helped you make a decision if you want. Hope you help, this helped you. All right, hope this helped you make a decision about direct injection. Cause now you know what direct injection is and how it works and how it works. If this helps you, if you've gotten anything from all right if this helped you've gotten anything from it has this been enlightening in any way shape or form please hit the like the subscribe button tell your buds about it as for me i'm getting back to work